when they realized that he had told this parable against them. Who's them? Who are they? You have to go back a little before this reading to figure it out. It's the chief priests and the scribes and the leaders of the temple. It's the pastor and the church council. It's the people who are the head of the local religion where Jesus is. And before this, they come to him with a question about his authority. Who gave you authority? Who told you you were allowed to speak like this to the people? And Jesus answered them with a question. He said, well, I will answer that if you can tell me the answer to this. Where did John's baptism come from? You remember John the Baptist who came before Jesus. Where did John's baptism come from? Was it divine or was it of human origin? And the chief priests and the scribes looked at each other. It says they had a little conference together. They whispered together and they said, well, we can't say that it's of divine origin because then he'll just say to us, well, then why didn't you listen to him? But we can't say that it's of human origin because if we say that, the crowd who thought that John was a prophet sent from God will turn against us. Our people, our congregation won't let us be leaders anymore because they think that John was a prophet sent from God. So they go back to Jesus and they say, we don't know, we don't know where John's baptism came from. And Jesus said, well then, neither am I going to tell you by whose authority I'm doing these things. And then it says immediately he told this parable that you just heard. And it's important because, well, I'll explain it to you, but you probably don't need it explained, right? That the vineyard owner is supposed to be God. It's a metaphor. And the slaves that are sent to the tenants are supposed to be prophets sent from God. And the tenants themselves are supposed to be the people who didn't listen to the prophets and who in fact took them and beat them and what happened to John? You remember Pastor Mike preached about it a couple weeks ago. He got his head cut off, right? That's what happens to those who are sent from God. And so Jesus telling this parable to them immediately after discussing where John came from, he's saying, okay, I know where John came from, and you better know where John came from too. He was sent to you from God, from the vineyard owner, from the one who planned and prepared and made everything ready for you to be God's people. And you didn't do it. You ignored. You beat. You killed. The chief priests and the scribes probably thought of themselves in a way that we would be familiar with. They weren't going against God, they were standing up for God, right? They were the religious authorities, they were the powers. They couldn't just allow anybody to come in and tell them what God was saying or what God had planned for them or what they were doing or getting wrong, what they were missing in God's plan. They had to keep the riffraff out, right? I mean, come on. Can't just let anybody walk in here. Can't just let anybody claim to be speaking the word of God. So that story that Jesus told, at first, they were probably listening to it as they'd listened to many teachings that Jesus had said, going, hmm, hmm, what is the point of this? Hmm. And then it says, they realize, oh, 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 oh. The point of this is that defending of the faith that we were doing, that leading, that keeping the riffraff out, that making sure that no one got up and said something that wasn't approved by us, the God leaders, the religious powers. 
he's saying that all of that was actually rejecting and even killing the people that God had sent to us correctly, properly, to get from us, to ask of us what God would have us do. So they were probably a little bit upset. They were probably a little bit upset about that. And said they wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowd, so they left him and went away. But we know, of course, that they will be back. Jesus is saying to them that they didn't recognize the signs. The signs of God's presence in the world. The signs of God's purpose and plan for the people. That they were rejecting those signs. That they were ignoring those signs. That they were turning away from those signs. One of my favorite moments in the entire Bible is actually in the book of Romans. Paul begins the book of Romans, the first chapter of the book of Romans. He begins with a long laundry list of all the offenses that the Gentiles have committed against God. He calls them slanderers and fornicators. He calls them God-haters. He calls them disrespectful toward parents. He calls, them, he calls them unfaithful, unhelpful. He calls them all sorts of names. And the reason he does that is because he's writing to a church that's split between believers, followers of Christ who were Jewish in origin, in background, and believers, followers of Christ who were Gentile in origin, in background. And so he's pointing out the Gentiles and all their flaws and all their failings and all their faults and all the signs that they missed. And the believers of Jewish background are sitting there going, yeah, yeah, that's what we've been saying all along. Yeah, those guys, yeah, they're the problem. Yeah, they've been missing the signs. Yeah, if only we could... And then at the beginning of chapter 2, Paul says, Therefore you have no excuse, whoever you are, when you judge others. For in passing judgment, you condemn yourself. If there was a sign for that, it would be a U-turn sign, all right? We're going along, yeah, yeah, we get it, yeah, yeah, we're on God's side, like whoop, <laughs> Whoa, we're off the edge. God just went that way, and we're going this way. God went the way of love, and we went the way of judgment. God went the way of including, and we went the way of excluding. God went the way of pleading with us to what does the Lord require? We're going to say it in a minute, right? Do justice, love mercy, walk humbly. And we instead decided to do what we want how we want, and to be proud of it. <laughs> the signs from God are not as easy as I talk to the kids about. We know that, right? There's some simple, obvious things. Yes, the love of my mother, your mother, my, my daughter, your daughter, my, you know, my children, my friends, my family. That's clearly a sign from God, right? But over and over and over again, we are the ones who ignore, who miss, who purposefully push away what God is trying to do in the world, in our lives, sometimes even in our hearts, in our minds. The task that we have ever before us has two aspects to it, I believe. First and foremost, we have to recognize that God has prepared us from childhood, some of us, from different points in life with others of us, but always and unceasingly, God has prepared us to do God's will and to walk in God's ways in the world. And delighting in God's will and walking in God's ways has those aspects of justice and mercy and humility 
It also has the aspect of looking at the world, looking at the people in it, even the people who are different than us, even the people who disagree with us, even the people that we might not be comfortable hearing from or welcoming in as those who are loved by God. God has prepared our hearts and our lives to be like that, to look like that, to accept and to love and to care and to work like that. And we have to recognize it and remember it. And the second aspect, the second thing that we have to do and remember is that we have to be open to a new message, a new sign from God. Maybe one that we've never seen before. You know, when the kids were looking at my signs up here, I wasn't sure that they would recognize all of them, and they did recognize most of them. But sometimes we see a sign that we've never seen before. And it's strange, and it's unfamiliar, and we don't know what to do with it. And too often our human nature, our human decision is to put that into the category of something that is not from God. A new message, a new voice. That can't possibly be God. That's got to be kept away from here. We're doing important work in here. And Jesus said to them, What then will the owner of the vineyard do? We are those who are called by God, who are led by Jesus into the places of the world with the people of the world that God would have us go. May we continue to be open to the signs from God. May we actively look around in the world for them. And may we know that we have been prepared by God to work in the vineyard, the kingdom of God. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.